There are some species that we just want to cuddle, and this is all to do with their features. I'm Hannah Stitfel and today we're visiting Wild Place Project on the outskirts of Bristol where we'll be taking a look at some species that trigger this response in us humans. Even though the species that we want to cuddle are some of the top predators on Earth. The European Brown Bear an iconic species that up until roughly 500 years ago was found nearly everywhere across the continent. Now brown bears are restricted to certain areas, with some of the highest populations being found in the central southeastern mountain ranges of Europe. It is estimated now that around 17,000 bears are found across the continent in scattered populations, which thanks to conservation efforts in some areas are slowly increasing. But what is it about brown bears that we simply find adorable? With their thick, fluffy fur coats that protect them from the cold, cute button snouts and short, tufty ears, we just want to cuddle them. When we see something fluffy, round and cuddly, it can trigger a response in us which floods the human brain with feel-good chemicals. It's been thought that when we are babies and small children, Having a fluffy, cuddly toy can ease stress and anxiety, aid our development, and begin to develop the need for us to nurture for others. So, if when you see a brown bear you go all gooey inside, your first best friend was most likely a cuddly toy, perhaps even a teddy bear. When it comes to big cats, they don't get much cuter than our next species. Once found across the African continent, on the open plains, dry forests and grasslands, they are known to be the fastest land mammal on Earth. The cheetah. These distinguished big cats are outstanding to watch. With their pale yellow coats covered in black spots and white underside, they are a standout species of the African plains. Their faces have curved black lines extending from their big amber eyes to the corners of their mouths with little furry round ears. They are exceptional hunters but mainly rely on their speed and the element of surprise to catch their prey. They can reach around 60 miles per hour over short distances. But why do we find a formidable African carnival so lovable? The cheetah has facial features that remind us of kittens, but also babies. Big forward-facing eyes compared to head size is a feature that newborn babies have and is something that makes us want to take care of them. Also, a cheetah's rounded ears and soft furry appearance are characteristics that initiate the caregiving response in humans, much like domesticated cats do. This theory is still debated, but when some people look into a cheetah's eyes, they simply find them irresistible. From the African plains to the island of Madagascar, our next species is undeniably enchanting and is found nowhere else on Earth. The black and white ruffed lemur. This visually captivating species is found in the forests of eastern Madagascar and weighing in at around four kilograms is one of the largest living lemur species on the planet. As their name suggests, they have black and white fur with a distinctive white ruff around their necks and piercing yellowy-orange eyes. They have the second loudest call of any primate, 
and use their long nimble tails to help them balance in the treetops. Known to be frugivores, they feed almost exclusively on fruits, but they will also feed on seeds and nectar at different times of year, using their long tongues to reach inside flowers to lap up the nectar. They also have the title as being the largest pollinator on Earth. As they travel from tree to tree, they spread nectar and also deposit seeds in their droppings, making them incredibly important for the forests of Madagascar. Black and white rough lemurs are highly sociable animals, mostly living in family groups of around five individuals. Although group size can vary from sometimes just two up to 16 strong. Their playful inquisitive nature and fluffy faces make them simply irresistible to watch. And they love exploring their environment with their noses. Always on the lookout for a fruity meal. Our next animal we have domesticated over thousands of years to become none other than man's best friend, the European wolf. One of the most revered animals in the world, the wolf is an animal of myths and stories which we have all grown up with. European wolves are often referred to as grey wolves, but their coats are in fact a more cream and sometimes brown colour, which in the thick forests of Central Europe helps them disappear into their surroundings. Wolves are highly sociable animals and pack hierarchy is very important, with every pack member knowing its place. At one time it was thought we domesticated wolves to aid with hunting, but now it is more widely accepted that wolves came into early human settlements to scavenge on our leftovers, becoming friendlier and eventually becoming our companions. Their similarity to our much-loved family pets makes some of us have a deep affection for wolves. It's been found that our cute canine counterparts can lower our stress levels. Even something as simple as playing fetch or stroking a dog increases levels of feel-good hormones, making us have an overwhelming feeling of happiness. Maybe the big bad wolf isn't as bad as you may think. During our time at Bristol Wild Place Project, we were lucky enough to get a behind the scenes look at what it's like to look after the fastest land mammal on earth. We teamed up with Zoe, one of the animal keepers, to help with feeding the cheetahs. So these are our three lovely cheetah brothers. Um, yeah, in the middle there, meowing at us, that's Brooke. Uh, over there, that's Oscar, and just over that side is Jake. They are generally a little bit grumpy, these cats. Right, okay. Um, they're usually quite impatient oh, to be fed. Nothing to worry about, <laughs> no. though, no? Great. So we're going to go in? We're going to shut them into a secure area, then we're going to put some food in and let them in, okay. and then we're going to go and spread the food out on the other side. Okay, excellent. And what do you feed them? Uh, so they're carnivores, so they eat meat. Yep. So today they've got some lovely quails uh, to share between them. Uh, we try to feed them as much whole prey as we can. So make sure they're getting everything in their diet here that they would in the wild. Lovely. <laughs> they look, I'm not too, I, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, but that's fine, isn't it? We're not going to be it's in fine. the same. No, we're not, we're so not. So where are we going then? So we're going to go in this side. So I'm going to close this door up here. And how many times a day do you feed them? So it depends what we're feeding them. So today, because it's quail, um, sometimes we will split the feed up throughout the day. Um, we're going to put all of this out now, just so we can give them a nice big scatter feed, yeah. um, which will keep them nice and active. But yeah, sometimes we feed them a couple of times a day. Um, sometimes we'll feed them rabbit or something like that instead. Um, and that's usually just once a day because they'll normally get one rabbit each or something like that. So yeah. he's watching you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
feeding the fastest land mammal. <laughs> They're like that up there, will they? Yep. Right, okay. There we go. So the conservation of cheetahs is really, really important now, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, recent estimates of their numbers in the wild are quite low, so anywhere between 7,000 and 10,000, um, which is really not a huge number at all. So it's really important that we try and look after them as best as we can. And how long have you had these three boys here? Uh, I think it's coming up to six years now, so it's been a good while. Um, they're nice and settled, quite happy living together. Um, Living in a group like this is quite natural for male cheetahs, um, particularly brothers. Um, they'll often live together in the wild like this. And obviously, as part of the breeding programme, not everywhere can breed them all at the same time. So it's important to have places that can hold non-breeding groups um, ready for when the offspring are old enough to leave their parents and need somewhere else to live. Well, I think they're absolutely wonderful. I've just fed the fastest land <laughs> animal on earth. Thank you very, very Welcome. much. <laughs> <laughs>